I've been in Chicago for the better part of 48 years, and I've been cooking basically my whole life, but I've been cooking professionally about 28 years. You guys want to stay and have a drink and some food, you should. My name is Paul Kahn. I am the executive chef, a word that I uh, never wanted to attach to my name, but unfortunately I have to. I am the executive chef for Blackbird, Avec, Republican, and Big Star. I don't get to cook as much as I would like anymore, unfortunately. When I do, it's joyous. I guess I'd say that I am a motivator, organizer, conceptualizer, numbers guy, concept guy, market guy, forager, food lover, goofball. Vertical man. That's, that's phenomenal. Blackbird is in its 14th year. First restaurant that I was part owner of. You know, I get the question all the time, what, what are your favorite food trends of the year, which makes me want to spit blood. And, and I say the same thing every time. The, the, the only food trend for us is great food, great wine, great service. I remember people telling me that we're at Blackbird for the first time in year 10, that this is a great new restaurant. It, it, it feels new, and that's an amazing compliment. We're doing a rockumentary, if anyone asks. Bryce Karen plays lead guitar yeah. from uh, Dusseldorf. We're going to Great Lake Pizza up in Andersonville. It is a really teeny little pizza place owned by a husband and wife, Nick and Lydia. Everything organic, everything local. First and foremost, Lydia and Nick are really, really nice people and they're really into local product and great simple food. I mean, the place is a salad, three pizzas, and uh, cookies or gelato or both for dessert and that's it. It's really sort of the direction that my mind goes in. I don't want to have 18 courses for four hours. I want to go eat something that's delicious, drink some wine, and you know, be with loved ones. This is Catherine, Biz3. She's been kind enough to take on the publicity for our dysfunctional company. This is David. David's the chef de cuisine at Blackbird. Bryce Karen, pastry chef at Blackbird. Laurent, one of our managers at Big Star. Uh, ben, manager of Big Star. Probably the most popular guy in all of Wicker Park in Chicago, as far as I can tell. You know, honestly, I, I don't, I'm not like a super big go-out guy. I'm kind of over it. It's a really good thing for a chef restaurateur to be. I, I like did a tasting menu at an unnamed restaurant like two years ago. And after like course five, my wife and I were looking at each other and it was really good. It's a great restaurant. Like, can we just get the fuck out of here? <laughs> Buddies visit me from out of town. This would be the place of choice always because it's super accessible, unpretentious, great food. <laughs> Hello. Good, how are you? Uh, we're going to a Korean barbecue joint, Chicago Kalbi. I mean, I, I normally eat three or four times a night, and this is only two, so. I'm, I'm, kind, I'm, kind, I'm kind of hungry right now. Look at this article, Pastrami's Second Coming. It's awesome, right? Oh, oh. oh man. My heroes. How are you? I love that place. The people are just, they're good as gold. They're so incredibly sweet, so welcoming. It's inexpensive and it's just really pure and simple, especially the barbecue itself. It's just putting meat on a grill and putting some kimchi with it and eating it. It's great quality. It's a fun place to go with a lot of people. Good, right? Kill it. We got one of the weirdest things ever here. Steak tartare with the mountain yam. It's like a steak tartare with slimy foam over it. Check it out. Oh yeah. It's like a yam and when you grate it, it turns into slime. But it's really tasty. It's off-putting, but it's delicious. It's not Freak Factor. No, no, no. I swear to God, I wouldn't do that. That's almost like cheese, right? No. It has no quality no. of cheese about it. Is. It is. Like, no it's really good. No booger, no mom <laughs> No, no boogers. They gave you a good tip? Mm. All right, thank God. No All right. <laughs> How awesome is that? The sushi case? Let's shut it down. Let's put baseballs in there. Oh, 
Japan is the best for player in the United States. Whenever they are in town, they come in. Really? Yes. Who would you say is the best baseball player consistently over the last 10 years in America? Ichiro. Ichiro's up there. He's certainly up there. Whenever he's in town? Every day. Oh, oh my god. Every day. Four days, four days. He's the best. Yeah. For me? He's? One of my favorite baseball players ever. There are baseball fanatics there, and every time Ichiro's in town, he comes to eat there every day, so he walks into a life-size picture of himself. It's the first time I've ever had a card in my whole life. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, I'm very irresponsible. I mean, we, you never mentioned signs. We don't know you have a card. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm, not kind of, I'm, not, I'm not that kind of guy. Yeah, I I'm on the down low, man. I'm not into making reservations. My, usually we make reservations in my wife's name. She has a different last name. I just do not want to be fussed over. Yeah, you're a chef. I'm a chef, yeah. Yes, you're a chef. But I have, uh, our first restaurant is uh, Blackbird. Oh, I heard about your restaurant. Very famous. My Japanese customer likes you so Japanese much. people yeah. like Blackbird. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much again. All right, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Yes, hi, thank you. <laughs> Man, I am so in love with her. She's amazing. How cute is she? Very cute. This is your other life. This is what you do. Ba you? Baseball. <laughs> baseball <laughs> hangout guy. We came to Publican. We put out a bunch of charcuterie that we, we make in house here, which I was pretty pleased with. Pretty special stuff. Oh my god. Apricots? Apricots and fucking farm rock. You know, my business partners, we conceptualize based on a food soundbite, basically. For the public, and the soundbite was oysters, pork, and beer. And it was like, I, I tested out with chefs, you know, our, they're like, what's your next restaurant going to be? And I'd say, oysters, pork, and beer. And everyone would be like, how could that be bad? We like to take flavors from all around the world, you know, from Germany and from Belgium. And, uh, you know, we, we'll do a schnitzel and, with uh, Mediterranean flavors on top of it. And the other concepts are so tightly defined and, and we don't stray outside of the, the flavors that define the place. Here it was like, you know, we can do whatever the hell we want uh, if, if it's good. So you get the deal here with the eggs, Dave? <laughs> Hello, okay. Hello. Eggs are next. <laughs> we talk German together when we're cooking. It's my Wolfgang Park imitation. Hey, what are you doing there, sonny boy? Oh. I have no idea what this is, I'm excited about it. The idea comes from Tunisia, right? What's the name of it? Uh, it's called Tunisian Fricassi. I have this great buddy named Lior who has a spice shop in New York. He keeps firing me all these ideas from Tunisia and from Lebanon. And so he gave me this recipe. It's like a Niswa sandwich. And I had been just dreaming about eating it. It's not a subway, but. Dude, give him some fucking beer. Oh, give him, wait, these guys are drinking man. point? I'm, I'm drinking point. Dude, it's Mike, Michael. Mike, Mike. Okay. Mike. Everyone else is drinking <laughs> cider and, and, and Saison. I don't know why these gentlemen are drinking point. Well, <laughs> whatever you guys want. Yeah, yeah, get more beer, the bar, the bar is yours. Uh, we have these giant vice beer glasses that Michael got. I call him the beer boy. My wife gets mad at me, but he's, I don't know, in his mid-20s and he looks like he's 14. But he's an incredible beer guy, and I guess him and David were hanging out by the bar, and David talked about the soda fountain thing called the suicide, where you take one of everything. We have 12 beers on tap, so they filled it up with 12 different beers. Oh my God. <laughs> What's in there? We made the first beer, beer suicide ever <laughs> at the public. Oh What's in there? Every single thing it's we have on bar. Come on. Yeah. That's disgusting. In a bar. Good <laughs> I'll definitely a and then a drunken guy, me, started pouring whiskey in it as we went. And it was really fun with all the cooks. You know, I think they were like, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to pull oh, that. Yeah, it's tasty. It's pretty good, man. We should put that on the brunch <laughs> menu. <laughs> Come on, David! I see that I just happened. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Dude, if you can't finish that, you're such a pussy. You're such a pussy. <laughs> pull it back, pull it back. You got it, you got it. You got it, you got it. Take it, take it. Yeah. I think we probably should have filled it up again and done it again, but that's just, that's just the, that's the alcohol still in my system talking. Yeah. 
Push! Come on, Michael. Come on, man. Woo! That was so wrong.